Hello students, I am Ishan Trivedi. Welcome you in the video lecture series. Today I am going to discuss about sampling and survey data checks. In this session, I am going to cover sampling and its introduction, different types of sampling, then expansion of those data and at last survey data checks. So first, let us start with the sampling. Here, the traffic engineer has to collect the data and based on that, the analysis has been done. Here, this analysis has been done on a varieties of subjects such as traffic volume, their origin and destination, then travel modes and various patterns, then speed band delay, then parking. It is impossible and impractical to collect full data and one normally takes resources to sampling. The idea is to obtain the information about a population by studying the characteristics of a sample drawn from the population. Here, the population is a class or you can say a set of object. This can be finite or infinite. A sample from a population is a set of object and drawn from the population. Here, why do we require a sampling? That is also one of the major concern here see we cannot take the entire study area data we have to take the sampling and it has to be representative for example in a home interview origin and destination study the population is set of all the dwelling units in the survey area whereas the sample is the set of dwelling units where the interviewers are conducted means in a particular study area there are number of houses but among of all these I will just collect few houses interviews and that is the sampling here the accuracy of the information obtained from the sampling that increases as the size of the sample increases and thus as the more number of samples the accuracy is more but here one constraint is there that we have the limitation of resources and second is the time constraint. So, in within the time frame and the resources and the cost which are involved in the sampling has to be put into consideration. Here, the selection of the sample has to be such that, that it covers the entire area and it can be representative. Here, the representative nature that should cover the different size of families, their cars, different income levels, their occupations, vehicle ownership and so on. It has been found that that the sample size is based on the principle that is smaller the population, larger has to be the sample size. So you have to understand here, larger the population, smaller will be the sample size and smaller the population, larger will be the sample size. So, the Bureau of Public Roads in USA has laid down few standards for household interview survey. Here, the population has been shown and the percentage of sample size is been given to you. For the population less than 50,000, the sample size is 20 percentage of total population. Next is, population ranges from 50,000 to 150,000, the sample size is 12.5 percentage. Then 1.50 lakh to 3 lakh, it is 10 percentage. Then 3 to 5 lakh, it is 6.7 percentage. Then population from 5 lakh to 10 lakh, it is 5 percentage. And the population where it is more than 10 lakh, it is a 4 percentage. Here, the minimum sample size for comprehensive survey has been maximum 5 percentage. Here, what we have to understand that the larger the number of population, smaller will be the sample size. And it has to be such that, that it covers almost the different sizes of population and, and as I said, it has to be representative and covers the entire area as well. So, we have to determine few things while doing the sampling. Now understand the 
different types of sampling that is random sampling stratified sampling cluster sampling and quota sampling so let us understand first that is random sampling random sampling as it, the name suggests that which involves the choosing of the household to be surveyed in a random manner it ensures that the at every individual or household has an equal chance of being included in the survey means everybody has the equal chance of being selected for the survey and this will be used for the further analysis here one method is to write out the door number of the houses in a street on a slip of a paper and putting them in a box and now i am going to select the numbers and i will draw few slips and find out those numbers those selected door numbers are given to the surveyor to do the interview and thus the survey or opinion has been done another method is to run the random number in the list and based on that choose the household in the accordance with the list here alternatively water list can be used as a sample and home interview has been done this will be done in again random number now second is stratified sampling it is done by dividing the population into different groups based on the specific characteristics like age sex income vehicle ownership then income group which can be a uh, middle income group lower income group or higher income group or some of those are of below poverty line and this is how i can just classify those cluster and sampling has been done for example based on the vehicle ownership the grouping may be done and another is no vehicle owner or you can say cycle owner motorized or two vehicle owner and car owner so this is how i will make group based on some specific characteristics next is cluster sampling here the cluster sampling refers to the collection of sample by grouping of different areas or zone into homogeneous group like slum area tenement independent houses with low level of development or normal development or you can say well developed area and thus i will make a cluster of a people and i will define it those groups into various zones or areas and ultimately it will convert it into homogeneous groups and this is how i will do the sampling next is quota sampling here the quota sampling is used when it is proposed to restrict the number of samples in this method the number of households to be surveyed in each zone is fixed in number and the same will be adopted for all the zone means from particular area i will just collect 20 samples that's it and this is how i will imply to all other places and this is how the quota sampling has been done particular quota is fixed for each zone now understand the sample size for the finite sample here the equation has been given that is n is equal to z square sigma square upon e square where n determines the finite sample size means how many samples that i am going to take in a particular area here z stands for standard normal variable which depends upon the percentage of confidence level here you have to understand the level of confidence level and for that you have to refer the z table here i have given you few values of z table for example 80 percentage of confidence level 90 percent 95 98 and 99 percentage of confidence level and for that you have to remember the respective sometimes it is been given in the z table and chi square table as well so you have to refer those tables here i have just shown you few values just for your reference sigma stands for standard deviation and e stands for percentage error for standard normal variable as i said different con different confidence level we need to refer so this is what the sample size for the finite sample now as i have collected the data now i have to expand those data from the samples so next is expansion of data from the sample why do we require this expansion see 
out of 100% is of total population of study area i have just taken few percentage of sample now i have to expand those sample size for example out of 100% if i conduct 5% of sample then what about 95% rest of the total then i have to expand it up to 100% and so that for the determination of the travel characteristics of the whole population from the data derived from the sampling of those data i have to use certain expansion factor and for particularly household interview survey the expansion factor is being given on zonal basis you can see here the expansion factor phi is a minus a upon b into c plus c by b into d upon b minus c minus d here this expansion factor is been carried out and based on that and from this value i will do forecast for whole population here that a determines the total number of addresses or you can say samples in the original list for example in a particular study area i have 100 household then i will put a number here the total number of houses are 100 then out of that b stands for total number of addresses selected as a original sample out of 100 sample what i'm going to do i will collect uh, 30 samples for my sampling now c determines the number of sample addresses that are in eligible means out of those selected 30 samples five samples are of not eligible to do the survey and d stands for the number of sample addresses where no response is obtained see out of those 25 samples what some of the samples are those where or some of the households are those where i didn't get enough data or any responses so nearly i will get 20 samples out of 100 samples so you have to find out the expansion factor similar expansion factor can be used for the commercial vehicle survey but on a area wise basis so this is just a sample expansion factor for household interview survey now the survey data checks the data collected for the transportation planning by various methods are required to be checked for their accuracy consistency and uniformity there are four types of check that is accuracy check screen line check consistency check and cordon line check so first let us start with the accuracy check the quality of data that determines its accuracy here the accuracy refers to the whether the data is correctly represent the event or the object the collected data must be consistent and true in value there are multiple dimensions of data quality such as accuracy relevance timeline then completeness understood by users here the data should provide a definition of what values are valid for each field and it should provide the type of data ranges of acceptable values the length of restrictions rules for entering for known or not applicable or you can say ineligible data so here for accuracy what i have to find out that the accuracy is minimum starts from certain value for example for regression analysis r values consider that if it is valid it has to be more than 70% if the data is irrelevant then it is just nearness to 30 to 40 percentage so for accuracy check what we have to determine we have to find out or make those limits or set of rules whether those data has been occupied and analysis has been done whether they are correct or not and for that we have to set the limit second is screen line checks see you have studied the screen line concept and the surveys that has been done 
this survey is done only for the calibration and here again those checks are also made for the calibration only see screen line surveys refers to the volume count which are conducted at different location in the study area at crossing along the natural barrier like river canal and some of the artificial for example railway lines the main purpose of this survey is the validation of model that we have developed based on the household interview survey the trip assignments are made which would be given the volume of traffic on different routes from which the trip going across the screen line which can be determined this is a cross check with the data on counts made at screen line location and the adjustment is been done for the calibration of model that we can be made next is next is screen line checks screen line survey refers to the volume count which are conducted at different location in the study area at crossing along the natural and artificial barriers like river canal and the railway lines the main purpose of this survey is the validation of model that we have developed based on the household interview survey trip assignments are made which would give the volume of trip on the different routes and from which the trips are going across the screen line are determined here this is one of the cross check that we are making and here the data calibration is been done and you can adjust those data as well and this is how you can make the model next is consistency check the consistency of the data which determines its validity accuracy integrity and the usability the data consistency problem may arise when backup copies of the data are used in place of original data the transport planner or you can say observer have the consistent view of the data if it is consistent inconsistent data may create the confusion in the minds of users next is cordon line checks you have understood the cordon line concept again i am telling you the definition so it will be revision for you the imaginary line which represent the boundary of the study area is termed as cordon line the area inside the cordon line or you can say external cordon line determines the travel pattern here the data collected from the internal to external external to internal and external to external movement is been done here the data collected at selected cordon points are useful for the data adjustment so this is the survey data checks and you have to understand all these four data checks method here i am ending this session i hope you have learned this concept thanks for watching this video